In this video, Simon Clark, a professional road cyclist and road captain with EF Education First professional cycling team, who was up in my local area of the Sunshine Coast recently promoting a cycling tour business he's got on the side called One More Ride, I'll link to their details below, will be sharing with us in this video his expert opinion on why there's a high turnover in professional cycling and some of the fundamentals he tries to educate young riders on when they first integrate into the pro cycling peloton. Before we get into the discussion with Simon, a quick reminder that I'll be giving this road bike away. It's the Merida Sculptura 4000, not this one in particular, but a brand new one, to a lucky subscriber a week before Christmas. So in about a month. So if you want to go into the draw to win this road bike, don't forget to subscribe below. And some of you, my channel supporters, might be wondering why I look like a 1980s porno star sporting this moustache. And the reason being, it's Movember here in Australia at the moment which is an annual event in November each year, which started in Australia in 2003, but has now gone global, where men grow mows to raise funds and awareness for men's health, all the way from prostate cancer to suicide prevention. Now, the reason why I bring this up is not only is Movember a great initiative, but we've also done some work on this channel surrounding mental health. And a couple of weeks ago, a channel supporter reached out to me with a story that I wanted to quickly share with you now, and that is, it's about 12 months on this channel, I did a piece on a cycling team in Melbourne. They're a community team that's focused very much on mental health. And he watched that video, and that was a trigger for him to finally go and have some proactive discussions surrounding the issues he'd been facing mentally. You see, before then, he was a fit guy, he ate well, and he was an exercise, fixes everything kind of guy. But as it turns out from his proactiveness, from the discussions that led him to a professional, despite being reluctant, he was put on some medication and 12 months later, so today, he's still on that medication and he's feeling a hell of a lot better. And he is adamant that if it wasn't for his proactiveness in having those discussions, he probably wouldn't be here to tell the story. So the moral of the, this story is that it's 100% okay not to feel okay, but it's 100% right to be proactive and have a discussion with somebody about how you're feeling. I'm gonna put some contact numbers in the below video description area, and let's get into this video. Relentless nature of the day after day. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, there's, there is a high turnover in cycling, and yeah, it's right. probably something that's not really documented that much. Right. Uh, but even, even uh, this year, the, a couple of Aussies, Aussies in my team uh, from last year weren't renewed, contracts weren't renewed. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, uh, I think one of them maybe found another team and one of them had to just go and get a nine to five nine office to five, job. And yeah. so, so not, not it's, cut out it's for tough. It. It's yeah. a tough game. And for me, uh, looking back on the success I've been able to have and my integration into pro cycling and into living in Europe is it's actually more important stabilizing everything you do off the bike and if you get that right the, the on bike stuff just comes naturally because yeah, okay. you're there so give me because you're a good you bike rider give me an example of what you're talking about well just uh, finding a good place to live yeah, okay. where that suits your lifestyle so yeah. don't okay everyone might live in a particular town but that town isn't necessarily good for you yeah, you okay. need to look at where you grow up and ha and the start the lifestyle that you grew up and performed well doing doing living that lifestyle so right. and, and you need to try and replicate that when you move when you move to Europe I believe interesting and yeah. you need to keep everything as similar as possible because the reason you're over in make the reason you make it in cycling is is because of what you did right at home to get the results that you did to get that opportunity so why change that you know you need to try and replicate that and and people and that's where people come unstuck they they don't replicate what they did at home the way they've trained the way they've the diet they've had you know they're not living at home maybe cooked by their family or their mum or whatever who decides what they eat yeah. and suddenly they're in a shopping aisle picking out the food and there's junk food and, noodles. and there's good food <laughs> yeah. and then there's two minute noodles and yeah. whatnot and it's easy to make bad choices there. Interesting, yeah. And then suddenly, okay, that that doesn't necessarily affect you overnight, but a whole season of doing that yeah. 
can did that happen to you when you first career? moved or you've just seen it unfold with others uh, I was pretty lucky I, I came over when I was super young when yep. I was 16 and so I spent six years Why so young you were in track originally yeah you? I was yeah. doing track and then I, I got into the AIS when I was very young yep. so I managed to have an opportunity to go and live in Europe when I was still a teenager and yep. so I rode for six years in Europe as an under 20 as a junior and as an under 23 before I turned professional yep. and so a lot of those mistakes and the learning curve that I went through I did uh, before I was professional interesting and so I didn't pay you know maybe I did I'm for sure I made some mistakes and 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 in that period but uh, there was less at stake because I wasn't uh, I wasn't a professional then yeah and you know once you turn professional every time you're up for contract you know you have to perform and if you don't perform then they just get rid of you yeah and so if you're trying to go through that learning curve and and trying to perform at professional level so you've come from a national level you've been scouted and and they bring you to Europe and now you need to perform at a higher level in a new lifestyle and if you don't then you won't get another job. Absolutely, it's, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty hard task, yeah. and you know I don't look down on anyone who who doesn't make it, and, and I actually because I know how hard it is, and uh, it, it's a tough game, and the off bike game is actually tougher, I believe, than the on bike game. Interesting, yeah. And if you can get that off bike game right, the on bike stuff uh, comes naturally. Uh, so it's tricky, and you know, doing it in a country where they don't speak English. You know, you got to learn a foreign language. You know, even things like, okay, maybe you knew a masseur in Melbourne or at home and you, you went and saw them once a week, every week while you were home training. Yeah. You might not, you might just not think of that when you move to Europe and go, well, you know, or you can't afford it or you're not willing to spend the little money that you're making on your, your new uh, pro contract. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you don't do those massages once a week like you did religiously when you were at home and then suddenly you're not recovering as well and then you can't train as good and then you're trying to race at a higher level than what you were racing before. Yeah. And, you know, it's a bit of a ricochet effect and then you go to race and you kind of get copper hiding and it's kind of, it's a downward spiral if, yeah. you, if you don't get on top of those kind of things. Absolutely, makes sense. So, That's yeah, I really, you know, as a kind of, leader in the team i really try and um work with the speak, young guys yeah work yeah. to these young guys and go look i always say to them as soon as they come to the team get your off bike life sorted rent go to figure out where you're going to live get a stable lifestyle and sort everything out so that you can replicate what you were doing at home while you're living in europe interesting and and have you seen it work well I've seen it work well and I've seen it not work right, okay. <laughs> many times Yeah, and it's it's not easy and and, and then at the end of the day, the hardest thing is when things don't go well, uh, coming back from that. So guys might put on a bit of weight or have a couple of bad races and the team gets stuck into them and said, look, you're not performing. And instead of having a negative response to that, you need to go, right, well, I'm going to prove to them that I am a good rider and I'm going to come back at the next race. I'm going to get back to my race weight and I'm going to perform well. And a lot of people don't have that reaction and it suddenly, you know, it just becomes this negative thing that the team's getting stuck into them because they're not performing. And then, you know, instead of trying to prove them wrong, they kind of just, you know, goes the other way. So, yeah, they and, fall, fall away. It's not, and then you're living in another country and you know you don't have all your mates with you and then you know gets you get a bit lonely and you know it's 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 tough you need to like basically build a whole new lifestyle overseas and, yeah you know that, there's plenty of ups and downs in pro cycling and you know there's not necessarily someone waiting for you at home when you come home from a race and if it goes badly you're just sitting there and you know it can uh get the better of you oh absolutely so 100%. It's, it's a tough lifestyle and you really have to embrace it and and you know commit to it